Daddy-o. Hey, yeah. <laughs> That's such Neil. a fun name to say. Hey, yeah, I like it. Rolls off the tongue. Doesn't it's it? fantastic. It Daddy-o. In case you don't know, uh, Neil does uh, tie-dye. Uh, you'll see him at all the festivals around here this summer. Where, what, which ones are you going to be at? Well, uh, May 2 4 kicks it off with uh, Frontier Ghost Town, uh, the Come Together Music Festival. It's an annual thing that's spring and fall. Uh, the end of the year, I'll finish out with uh, Labor Day there, uh, which is always a good time. Um, then there's several others. There's going to be Puff Jam. Um, let's see what else. Um, we got the Burnt Up Fest. There's going to be Jam Land. Um, I'm still forming it all oh, together. I didn't realize, I didn't realize yeah. there were this many hippie festivals. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. I, uh, I did seven of them last time. So, <laughs> right yeah. on, man. So to get the interview kicked off, we've got uh, an icebreaker here. We've got, uh, what is the question? Who is your favorite fictional character? Oh, I'm going to start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, like, my favorite fictional character is, is Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say Holden Caulfield. No, I don't actually even know who that is. You strike me as kind of that. Catch her in the rye. <laughs> Catch her in the rye. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even I know that. <laughs> Neil, what about you? What's your favorite oh, fictional character? Oh, my favorite fictional character. Um, how about Sherlock Holmes? He's awesome. Oh, yeah. He's fictional. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Stuff, and he's like a, like a flawed hero. Like, he has yeah. his moments oh, where sure. he, like, the, the, he's not made out to be perfect. And he's meant to deal, Watson. <laughs> Which you know was never said in, in, in really? anything. He's never said that. Did they just add that in for the movies? They just it just became a thing that people think that he said, but it was like played against Sam. Right? Yeah. yeah, never said yeah. played against Sam. No. And then Woody Allen <laughs> made a movie like called Play It Against Sam. <laughs> there you go. Even though it never been said. Up. What about you? Who is who are you? Into? My favorite fictional character. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go with my favorite from when I was a kid. I don't know if this still holds up, but uh, uh, Ian Malcolm in Jurassic Park, Jeff Goldblum. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, I don't know why, but because when you watch that movie back, he's not a likable guy. No, but he's very charming. He's very charismatic. I like when he's on screen. Like, he's, you're definitely not supposed to like him though. No. Like the first thing you see is him hitting on Sam Neill's girlfriend. What a douche. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's talk about tie dye. Tie dye. What do you want to know? Well, I, I actually someone just talked to me about tie dye the other day. Said uh, I just realized why it's called tie dye. No tie and dye. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, but it's not. It's, it's not necessarily tie. Um, yeah. Like a lot of people think, you just take some strings or you you take some elastics, just bind them up, and then you dip them in a big old pot. Well, no, maybe at church camp you did when you were a kid, <laughs> but the kind of stuff I do is, um, there, there's a lot of different styles I do. Um, I do what they call Southern California um, style tie-dye, which is basically based on uh, the tie-dyes that came about with uh, the band The Grateful Dead back in the 60s, and then followed on through um, until 95 when Jerry died. and. Uh, Myself, I was lucky. I got to see Jerry Garcia play 37 times. Nice. Oh, Which, considering, you know, my the timing was perfect. I yeah. was in college, I was broke, but hey, I caught every show I could. And back then, tickets were cheap, so you could. And, yeah. And I started out um, in 89, um, started making some tie-dyes. And I would go to a show, throw them in the back of my backpack, and just, you know, hey, man, want to buy a T-shirt? Ten bucks. You know? <laughs> yeah. I always had money for tickets and gas and food and booze and, you know, whatever else. And uh, anyways, I did that for, you know, a few years. This is a hobby, something fun to do. And um, then basically Jerry died, and I got serious about career and became a pastry chef in Toronto at both the pick restaurants and did that for a number of years. And then nine years ago, I had an accident, and I buggered up my back. Yeah. And... Uh, it changed my life, but in a way, it, it brought me back to my roots. Yeah. And um, I, uh, I had a kit from Michael's, a tie-dye kit. And uh, basically, my son was five at the time, and I, uh, I said, hey, let's make up some tie-dyes. We'll have a little daddy-o day camp kind of thing. <laughs> That's where the name came from. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So I was at the time, because I was home, I was taking the kids' places and stuff like that, where mostly it was all women. And, you know, they were having a craft show or whatever, and they were like, hey, how can we sell some tie-dyes? And I said, sure. And it's like, that's when daddy really came, because I was the only guy. Yeah. It was all women selling Etsy stuff, or, you know, the, yeah. you know, the, the Scentsy and yeah. all the yeah. Tupperware or whatever. And then there was me. So you carved your niche. <laughs> and so that's where the name came from, was tie-dye daddy And, yeah. of course, they spell it T-Y-E, because everybody spells tie-dye T-I-E. Right? Yeah. Right? So let's shake it up a bit, you know? So, oh. <laughs> so I, uh, I started doing that. And, um, you know, basically, this was right around the time that Facebook came out. And basically, a lot of friends of mine from 20 years ago 
We're like, hey man, you're making these things again? Yeah. I got shirts that you made me 20 years ago that are still bright and colorful, yeah. but they're wearing out. I've washed them hundreds of times, you know? Mm -hmm. And can you make me a new one? Um, I've got kids now. Can you make a couple for my kids? I love that. Yeah. So I started doing a little bit of that, and then I started vending at you know some local markets and stuff like that, and you know didn't really make a lot of money, but yeah. it got me out and you know gave me more money to be able to buy more supplies keep on, keep and on, yeah. do my art. So how? So you do more than just shirts? Oh right? yeah. Right now you're wearing oh. a full-on jumpsuit. Oh yeah. Well, and I'm looking at a bunch yeah. of tapestries hanging here in Big Studio. Yeah, I, I've done everything from Chuck Taylor Converse yeah. to oh, um, cool. to prom dresses. Uh, <laughs> you, I, did, I, you had one pair of like long underwears that you did oh, tie dye. And you name it. I, I love doing I love doing custom work where yeah. people come to me with an idea and they say, "Hey, I've got this." Yeah. I, or a lot of women, they'll have a you know a favorite sundress that they love wearing, and they get out on the patio one night drinking the Pinot, yeah. and next thing you know, it's all over them. And they're like, what am I going to do with this dress? And say, like, you give it to daddy -o. And then I do my thing to it. And now they've got a one-of-a-kind Pinot swilling and spilling outfit that nobody will be able to tell. That's amazing. That is awesome, man. That, so that, where, how, where do you get the clothes to tie-dye if, if not from people that say, I'd like yeah, to custom yeah. make this? Well, a lot of stuff, I do get some stuff that I upcycle. A yeah. lot of women's stuff is upcycled, um, which... A, a lot of hippies love the fact that it's upcycled. Totally. Um, keeping it out of the landfill, you know. Um, so I, I get stuff at, like, thrift stores and stuff like that. I do buy a lot of stuff brand new. Yeah. You know, like, um, right now I've got a bunch of women's bodysuits. Cool. Really sexy little tie-dye, you know. <laughs> Girls look great in them. And uh, I get them at a Blue Note store that's near me that's an outlet. So I get them for a fair enough price that I can still sell them tie-dyed for about what it would cost to buy just a plain colored one cool. in the mall. Oh, that's really cool. Right on, so, dude. you know, like you walk in the mall, it's going to cost you 20 bucks for this bodysuit. Well, I'll sell it to you for 30 and it's one of a kind. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, so yeah. I do a lot of that. T-shirts, I have, you know, wholesalers that I go to and I buy, you know, 12 dozen at a time. Yeah. Like, in the beginning of the, of the spring, because I tie dye outside. Yeah. Um, beginning of the spring when I'm getting ready for the festivals, I go hard. Yeah. I made over 600 tie dyes last spring. Yeah. Before the festivals. And then I did probably another 400 during the summer of Whoa. various things. Yeah. Because you got to keep the stock up. Yeah. You know. But there's so. different there's different kinds of tie dyeing too, right? You said yeah. so you had some that were you called them like ice dyed. Right. What's right. that mean if something's well, ice dyed? Well, basically, I make my dyes outside, and uh, basically the way the process is, you take the the shirt, you fold it you, into the pattern you want, or spin it, or whatever. Yeah. And then you soak it in a solution of soda ash, which basically makes the chemicals in the dyes react, so it binds right to the fiber. And um, basically, you use a liquid dye that you just basically squirt, 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 squirt your colors where you want to have it. Yeah. Then you rinse it out and you, you untie it, and this is what you've done. Yeah. And it's basically organized chaos. I have an idea what's going to happen, <laughs> but you never really know. It depends on how it's going to flow. Yeah. So that's the traditional way. Okay. But there's a lot of other ways, too. And like in the winter, because I do it outside, I really get jonesing for making something. So I usually, by about December, first good snow, I'll do an ice dye or snow dye, which is basically you fold it, you soak it, everything's still the same, except for instead of using the liquid dye that you squirt onto it, you use powder dye. Okay. It's a little bit more expensive because you go through a lot more dye, Yeah. but it's a cool effect. And basically you put your colors on the places you want it, you dump the snow on it, you bring it inside. Now I put it in a Rubbermaid tote, Yeah. you bring it into the house, let it sit overnight for a day or two, and what happens is the snow melts down through the fabric and it drags the color through it. And it gives a really cool, soft, almost watercolor pastel kind of. That's really it. cool. And depending on how you bind it, like you're saying, tie. Yeah. Right? People think you just use a you know string and you know elastics. Well, it's not that way. Yeah. I do use elastics. Yeah. Uh, in some cases. I do use some twine, but it's not just regular old string. Okay. I, I use what they call artificial sinew, which is used in leather work a lot. It's basically a polyester cording that's been coated with a beeswax. Huh. So when I bind that and I pull it tight, it gets about 70 pounds pressure. So what happens is nothing gets through there. Yeah. So once I've dyed it and I open it up, you get some really cool effects. Oh um, yeah, we got some we got some shirts behind us here that we were actually selling at Pick Studio. Yeah. Let's show them. So actually I don't oh, know if any of these are really cool. Yeah. Well, this is a, this one here is a spiral. Basically, this is one of the easiest, simplest, but it's one of my favorite. And people love a spiral. Basically, I don't know if you can see this, but 
Basically, to make this, you're gonna take the shirt like so flat. And when I'm doing these, generally, I soak them in the soda after they're damp. And then you take it in the center and you start to twist. And because it's damp, it comes together really nicely. And basically, it comes together like about like that. And then you put your rubber bands on it to hold it. And then when you apply your dyes, you apply them like a pie. Okay. Shape. So once you've done it, you've done the rainbow, you start it out here and go all the way around. Um, sometimes I'll flip it over, and then the backside I'll do just all black or something like that to give you some real definition. That looks really neat even how you're holding it yeah. right there. That's really cool. But then cool. when you open it, yeah. that's when you get where the spiral yeah, comes that's together. that's so cool. So this one might be an iced dye, is Right. It? Okay. This one here is an iced dye. This is one oh, that's, that's basically, rad. this is done with the artificial senior. The basically, to make this one, it's very random. But what I like about these is, you look at the front, it's one thing. You look at the back, and it's not the same. Whereas this one here is basically a mirror image of it. Mm. But because of this, what you can do is you can gather it up and then apply your twine, your artificial senior, and pull it tight, pull it tight, pull it tight, apply your dyes, um, and then you put the ice on it, the snow on it, and then, and that's what you end up that's with, really something like neat. that. That looks so cool. Man, that's awesome. So, and then this would be another Ooh, twist one, one, I guess. Yeah, that's right? another spiral. Yeah, that's another spiral. Yeah. Okay, so just what's what's uh, a memorable story? You've done, you've done, you've lived a life, man. Yeah, mm. festival life is pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's what's a memorable story, just from your from your? Well, is this a PG show or is it? Uh... Uh, let's, let, it's it's fourteen A. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fourteen A. Well, yeah. Well, basically, I've met a lot of great bands. Yeah. You know, that's one thing. I love good live music, yeah. in particular jam bands, that kind of thing. Yeah. And a lot of these festivals have a lot of great local Ontario talent coming up. Bands like Flat Five. Yeah. Um, bands like Road Waves out of Niagara Falls. Uh, Mustache, Mustache Hat. Hat. Um, yeah. Diesel Dog. Um, you know, Connor Gaines Band. Uh, yeah, there's he's so great. many great bands that he's are, incredible. you know, yeah. it, I, I'm telling you, some of these guys, you're going to see them on the Junos. Yeah, oh, soon enough. Mm -hmm. You know, like, the moment I saw Connor, yeah, I was like, oh, wow, fantastic. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Every time I see him at a festival, I walk by him. I go, ladies and gentlemen, Connor <laughs> Gaines. Well, that guy said to him, maybe like, one day I'll, be, I'll, I'll do his album and <laughs> yeah. show. You know? but, I told him, I said, man, you don't, you don't play guitar. You, you speak guitar. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. great. So yeah. natural. But there's yeah. some some great bands I've met over over the years. I've done T-shirts for the bands for some of them, where they say, hey man. I want to get our logo put on a shirt. Can you tie dye them? I say like, absolutely. You yeah, know, that. I did. Uh, I did uh, two hundred of them recently for Roadways and for their summer tour last year, and they're going to be going back out on the road this year across Canada. And they're going to get some more made up as well. So, I'm happy to help them out to promote yeah. them to to give them a shirt that looks awesome that people totally. are going to want to buy. Yeah. And it gives me a little bit of work too. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's rad, man. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, man. Let's hey, let's no. make sure. So, what festivals do you have coming up? Let's listen one more time for okay. anyone. Okay. Well, uh, be out again, there. It, some things are still to be finalized, mm -hmm. but guaranteed, come together music festival Great in Durham, festival. just north of Durham, Ontario. Um, it's uh, one of the. It's my favorite. It's out of all of. That is my favorite festival. It's twice a year. You've got May two four, and you've got Labor Day. And then also another one that goes on on the same property is July 1st. It's a new one that some friends of mine have put together, uh, Cale Stewart and uh, Nathan Johnson. And uh, they did it last year for the first year. This year will be the second, and that's July 1st. And then there's going to be Puff Jam. There's going to be Jam Land. <laughs> there's a lot of jamming going on. <laughs> uh, and then there's going to be the Burnt Up Fest. Uh, uh, some of these are uh, 420 friendly um, festivals. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a good fit. You know, yeah. the people that like my stuff generally like that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, so yeah, there's a few that I'm still uh, trying to put together and finalize, but um, pretty much those are my main ones that I'll be at for sure. Cool, awesome. man. Thanks, man. All right.